Dementia affects millions of people, but there are some steps you can take to delay or even prevent it. And joining me now is Dr. Malathai Srinivansan with Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. Always good to see you. Okay, so tell us more about dementia. Is this, is it just part of normal aging? It is, so this is the key message. Dementia is absolutely not a part of normal aging. Okay. In fact, people live healthy, vibrant lives throughout the entire span of life. So they have not only just a large lifespan, but a health span. And dementia is a series of uh, chronic progressive brain deterioration disorders. About two thirds of them are Alzheimer's, two thirds affect women, and about a third are actually preventable through healthy lifestyle. Okay. Or we, we can delay it. Yeah, we want to yeah. talk about that because what can you do to prevent or delay dementia? Well, there, there's a lot of things. I think the first thing is early recognition. Um, so, you know, uh, with Alzheimer's dementia, which typically starts after someone is 65 years old, there's about a 10 or 20 year uh, lead up to it where people have some gradual impairment of function. And it's not just memory. People always say, oh, you know, someone is having trouble with their memory. Um, but it can be judgment, executive functioning, um, it can be uh, things happening having to do with spatial coordination, language, um, a word finding, coordination, all of those things can be affected. So early on, people can have trouble with getting lost in their house, for instance, or getting lost around their neighborhood, misplacing their keys, not remembering things. And by the time dementia is a little bit in sort of the, the middle range, um, uh, it's very obvious, but early on it's not so obvious. So in the middle stage of dementia, people are have, getting scammed, they're having a lot of trouble, and by the time dementia is advanced, and it's really irreversible, um, uh, people have need help with almost all of their activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that we can do. So there's some good news and bad news about dementia prevention. The first is that there's no magic pill. And I, I wish there was, but you know, of the hundreds and hundreds of trials that have been done, um, over 150 in the past uh, 20, 30 years, there's only, of the drug trials, only four medications have actually been shown to uh, treat dementia, and that's for Alzheimer's in the moderate range. Um, and it prevents or slows dementia by about, uh, uh, by about six months. It doesn't actually fix the problem. And all of the other trials that have tried to help us see if we can um, treat dementia and prevent it haven't really been effective so far. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the bad news. Um, uh, the good news is that there's a lot of uh, trials out there that are still ongoing. There's about a hundred of them clinically uh, in trials that hopefully will lead some good results. So there's a lot of things that we can do. The first is a healthy lifestyle can prevent or delay um, dementia by about a third, we think, especially Alzheimer's. And again, there's lots of different types. So um, healthy diets such as um, uh, you know, keeping a Mediterranean diet, most likely the uh, ketotic diets or the low carbohydrate diets, um, exercising, especially exercising where you're getting your, your heart pumping. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, cardiovascular exercise more than resistant exercise. Um, uh, not smoking, avoiding excess alcohol, having a normal body weight, controlling your blood sugar, and managing your blood pressure so your systolic blood pressure is less than 120. Okay, so diet and nutrition and exercise can really make a difference. They make a huge difference. Okay, so what should you do if you think someone might be experiencing dementia, might be yeah. getting it? And you know, dementia is a devastating thing because people seem completely normal on the outside, but on the inside, they're having loss of identity, loss of their functioning, and loss of who they are. And it's devastating both for the individual as well as for the family. And many people who have dementia really hide it from everyone because they don't want to admit that there's anything wrong with them. Sure. So it's really up to friends and family in addition to the person to notice those changes and the first thing is once you notice it get them to see their doctor right away. Um, the reason for that is that there's a lot of things that look like dementia that you can treat like depression or low thyroid or uh, low uh, vitamin B12 and a whole host of other things and your doctor can also help determine which type of dementia you have. Is it Parkinson's like or multi-infarct or Alzheimer's or some of the other ones. Um, and then there's a, there's a lot of things that people can do in the office to be able to screen for dementia, some very easy bedside tests. And then there's a longer sort of four-hour test called a neuropsychiatric examination that you can get referred out to for uh, dementia diagnoses. And once you get diagnosed, uh, there's a question about sort of, you know, what next steps are. Sure. The blood tests that are available right now really aren't very helpful yet, but there's a lot in the, a lot coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. And then the, um, uh, uh, the imaging, there's some new 
few tests like a CT amyloid test and other tests that can be done um, that can really help with potentially early diagnosis, but that's all still much more in the research arena than it is in clinical practice right now. Okay, so someone gets diagnosed with dementia, what kind of treatments are available? Right, so, so as I was saying, kind of the good and bad news. So the, the good news is that there's a lot of stuff um, uh, in uh, development, um, both for prevention and for treatment, and the, the um, medications that we have are really two classes of medications. There's only four medications that are FDA approved for Alzheimer's, but there's a lot of things for Parkinson's and for multi-infarct dementia. So after risk factor control and increasing exercise and diet, uh, the two medications that you can use are uh, one called a neuraminidase inhibitor, excuse me, um, NMDA inhibitors and then some acetylcholine esterase inhibitors. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and the supplements, so the, the problem with the supplement industry, uh, so you may have seen in the news, there's a lot of stuff having to do with um, antioxidants or other things that people claim have an impact on dementia, but right now it's much more wishful thinking and science fiction than actual science. Okay. So the FDA has been cracking down on groups like that. There is a little bit of data that shows that high dose vitamin E might help, but then that has a lot of side effects. Okay, well thank you for all of this information, Dr. Srinivansan, it's always good to see it's you. It's great to see you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank and you. just a reminder, a physician from Stanford Healthcare joins us every Monday, so tune in next week for a new topic on our health. This is all information we can all use. We'll be right back.